Um, I'm James Hills. The um, Gas Turbine Builders Association is basically a group of uh, enthusiastic model engineers who love things that burn very hot and rotate very fast. However, they've been developed into nice things like model locomotive here, which is a <coughs> model of the GT3, which was a gas turbine powered prototype, uh, which was built back in the early 60s. Now it's actually built as near to the original as could possibly be uh, achieved based upon uh, a lack of actual detailed drawings. So there's uh, a certain level of, of estimation from pictures, etc. But we've got basically a gas turbine located in here, and there is an example of the turbine that's actually inside the locomotive. And we have a single stage centrifugal compressor on the front end, and a single stage axial flow turbine at the back, and a vaporizing combustor in the middle, and we use kerosene or paraffin as the fuel. Kerosene, paraffin d doesn't vaporize at ambient temperature. So what we do, we start off with a little bit of gas and that gets ignited by the glow plug. So whenever we start this up, you'll hear a little pop as the gas ignites. That warms up the vaporizer system. A thermocouple at the back end detects the temperature rise and we then start putting in kerosene You'll hear the energy rise and heat coming out of the stack. And this will is driven up. We actually use a little electric starter motor to actually turn these over. And the electric motor has a Bendix on it, drops on, starts to turn it over, and we'll continue to accelerate it up to its self-sustained speed, which on an engine like this is about 24 to 25,000 RPM. A self-sustained basically means that the turbine is delivering enough power to actually power the, drive the compressor itself, at which point the electric motor disengages and the engine, the turbine will then gradually take the compressor up to its idle speed, which on this is about 45,000 RPM. Once it's at idle, authority is then given to the driver to actually use the throttle uh, and an engine like this at full throttle is actually delivering 160,000 RPM. Now, as you can imagine, in a locomotive, this locomotive, we are actually driving the wheels directly. So, as you can imagine, that could be a serious gearbox involved. <laughs> However, what we use is what's called a free power turbine. And what that does is we take this jet blast that's coming out of the back end through a passage and we put it into a second turbine, a larger turbine through, so we've increased the pressure, reduced the speed. So this turbine, although the, end, the gas turbine is running at 160,000, this only turns at 50,000 RPM, which becomes a little more manageable and actually, if you look at the locomotive here, you can see the arrangement. Uh, in front of the exhaust pipe there, there's a round gearbox. Now, that's, that's the power turbine. Go to the other side. Yeah, that's the one. That's the gearbox. And that's just a 5 to 1, or just over 5 to 1 gear ratio, which gives you 10,000 or 9,000 on the output, which is more or less a standard model internal combustion engine by that point. So the helicopter at the far end, the mechanics from that output upwards is the identical internal combustion engine aircraft. The rig here, both in this engine and the, the, in this locomotive and this locomotive, actually are turboprops. Now, this little engine at 160,000 RPM is producing 14 pounds of thrust, one four pounds of thrust. However, once we capture all that energy that's otherwise thrown out at high velocity and high temperature, we capture that, turn it into shaft power, we can now turn a, a prop, a nice big prop, and that prop will actually develop 50, 50 pounds of thrust. So we actually are making much, much better use of the energy inside the machine. Now what we have on here, so we've got shaft power coming out of here, and there's a gear chain that goes down, including a bevel, which gives us forward and reverse capability. 
and there's a switch on the back, so it's a very quick changeover to go back into reverse, into forward, and we'll demonstrate that as we run it. But to give you some idea of, uh, of the output this, this gives, a five inch gauge locomotive or chassis like this with a steam plant on it, you would expect about 0.75 brake horsepower to the wheels. This, if we ran it up to full power, it would give seven and a half brake horsepower to the wheels. As you can probably understand, we do not use it at full power. <laughs> it would be tearing around the track at a hell of a speed. So, <laughs> tearing up the track. Anyway, so it is a lot of energy, and even the full size in its, its original form had a monstrous amount of, uh, amount of power. But the biggest problem with any gas turbine is it is only fuel efficient at maximum RPM. And any locomotive is having to stop at lights, it's having to stop at stations. So this thing used to actually just chew up fuel regardless. Uh, and that's why it did about, uh, I think about 15,000 miles testing on mainline uh, UK tracks, but never went into fair paying service because it couldn't be made economic. Whereas the 18100 did in fact go into service because it was a turbo electric and the efficiencies changed with the turbo electric. But anyway, let me can you put those back over there and we'll uh, run it up. Now you've got a rough idea of what it is you're looking at. I'll stand here just for two minutes whilst we fire it up just in case we get horrid flames out. But generally it's all cool, cool carbon collected. Ready? Okay, fire away. Okay. Here we go. Gas on. As you see, no ash. <laughs> yeah. There's the kerosene going in. Motor dropping out, so it's now running by itself, going up to idle speed. Okay, that's idling. Ready to run. I'll come round the back in action. Okay, that's
<laughs> so now we'll go through a cooling cycle to take the heat out of the engine. So the nose is about uh, 250 the, degrees in there. A free power turbine after the main turbine. If we don't cool the engine, so the heat goes into the shaft, in which goes banana shaped. So there's a dynamic the bearings get overheated and destroyed, so every time you run the engine, it trashes itself. Uh, and then that goes so it automatically through goes through a barring cycle. Uh, to get the Which temperature down to 100 degrees centigrade but just by pulsing air through the engine and, and, and dumping and the heat out of the exhaust slats. That's what it's doing now, entirely automatically. The second 